Godzilla versus King Ghidorah. Ah, old. Ooh, have I three. seen this one? You have seen I this have one, seen Jack. This one. It's, it's good. Three heads. I, I might be able to contribute to the It is the first time that they introduced the concept of time travel. Mm-hmm. So this came out the same year as Terminator 2, 1991. And so in, there was a big kind yeah. of time travel hype at the time. Yeah, there's a big, big time travel kind of plot in mm. this one. Long story short, people from the future come back in time. Japan's going to be attacked by Godzilla. We'll, we'll sort him out for you. They then pick up some people from the then present, go back further in time to World War II, where we discover that Godzilla has evolved from a Godzillasaurus, and he's been protecting this island of Japanese soldiers that are being attacked by some Americans. The people from the future then move Godzilla, who's now severely injured, into the ocean, away from where Godzilla is going to be irradiated by the nuclear fallout to then become proper Godzilla. But what they don't tell the people from the then present is the fact that the people from the future put three door rats on the island. Door rats? What's a door rat? Ooh, I, remember, I think I remember, yeah. Three... Well, think of what else is... In threes that you can think of that's also in that film. Oh, I can't remember that movie at all. Or well, three things. Three mm. door rats. What's right. King Ghidorah got? Well, he's got three heads because he's a three-headed dragon. Anyway, these three <laughs> really cute little door rats, which are kind of pets from the future, supposedly, are left on the island, which then get irradiated and turn into King Ghidorah. Yes. I thought King Ghidorah was... Space age. Yeah, Astro Monster, isn't it? From yeah, space. <laughs> in the show era, he's from space. In this one, he's from the future. So we right. should. So, so this we, isn't the first so, time we've seen King Ghidorah. No. So we should preface that, from what I've taken from that, is that these different eras are like straight reboots. They don't sort of carry yes. on from the previous so one. Yes. So in the Heisei era, from the Return of Godzilla, it, that is a direct sequel to the original. Okay. Cuts out all the other fourteen in between. Oh, that's the that's all the ones I've got. <laughs> <laughs> so, the people that were time travelling, time travel from World War II back to the then present, to 1991. And everything's evolved. There's no Godzilla anymore, but King Ghidorah attacks. Right. And it's like, oh no! And it turns out it was a big scheme from the people from the future to take over with their monster, King Ghidorah. Chaos in shoes. <laughs> Chaos in shoes. <laughs> how, do we, how do we get Godzilla in it then? Well, so they moved Godzilla into the ocean, where he's supposedly been residing for the last 30 years. This is the Godzilla-saurus. This is the Godzilla-saurus. But what's happened? No idea. A nuclear sub has gone missing. Oh dear. Dun-dun-dun, <laughs> and as luck has it, Godzilla's back! Yeah. Now bigger and more powerful than ever. Oh, multiple universes. Yeah, so if he's... So this is... Uh, does this carry on from the other films, or is this... Yeah, yes. So why is he now not there and then suddenly there again there is a bit of time travel (laughs) (laughs) that is very much the case with this series because it kind of eliminates the previous films but also they happened and nobody forgets that they didn't happen i think it's kind of an avengers end game kind of time travel rules they've gone into the quantum realm so anyway quantum leap (laughs) the people from the present aren't happy with people from the future, so they go about putting Godzilla against King Ghidorah, and then they have a fight. At which point, King Ghidorah comes off a little worse for wear. Any ideas? Who remembers? Gets his head bit off. Does he get a head cut off? And Iggy, then at Iggy? one point, I think it's there like a post credit scene or something? Where you see he it. gets his head completely blown off by Godzilla. Mm. Which Center. one? Middle one? Centre. You think that would be the most like he gets completely annihilated and falls into the ocean. Okay. And the people from the future then get blasted by Godzilla. That deals with them. But unfortunately for everyone, Godzilla's back. Right. So, <laughs> so he <laughs> then goes on rampant. what he normally does. Does he get a robot head at one point? Well, oh, okay. <laughs> the a... surviving people from the future go back to the future and resurrect King Ghidorah as Mecha King Ghidorah to then bring him back to the past to fight Godzilla. <laughs> so he gets another second round with King Ghidorah. Yes, as he, Mecha King Ghidorah. He picked a nice simple so one. So does he have, talk about. as you just said, Jack, does King Ghidorah now have a robot head? Yes. Mecha King Ghidorah. And robot wings. And, robot and loads wings. of robot attachments Bits. and things. Okay. And then they have a fight. Uh-huh. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so it's kind of like a cyborg. Yeah, he's being controlled by somebody in a little pod. He's kind of 
It's like a gamer. Jaeger style. Didn't yeah. they do that? Um, what isn't that a thing in the reboot or in the most recent one? Where there's a guy in like well, a skull or something. To, yeah, in, yeah. in skull. his skull, and yeah. it goes horribly, horribly wrong. Mm. <laughs> horribly. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it just reminded me of talking about Terminator, but there's actually a, a cyborg-y type character that kind of acts very Terminator-like in this story, mm-hmm. and he's in like a car crash and he's got like a burnt face, but he's just showing no emotion or anything. So at this point, obviously, we're like several films down the line from the, the original. Yeah. We've definitely gone into like full-on sci-fi territory. Yeah. <laughs> so it's no longer a kind of a monster disaster film. It's more of a full-on sci-fi action. Yeah, very much so. Kind of dips into lots of different genres. So anyway, after their final fight, Mecha King Ghidorah kind of grabs Godzilla, takes him out of the city, and Godzilla then blasts him, and then they both tumble into the ocean. Is that the end of the movie? That was the end of the movie. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so in this era, have we now kind of lost the, that uh, sense that the movies have a underlying message to the to the viewer i think it's are these now going totally kind of just for as jack said the sci-fi action, in this lot, particular one i think it's a lot to do with time travel and kind of exploring that okay so we're not sort of really talking about the the way the human beings are destroying the planet and things anymore That's i mean there were kind of... like lots of in the showa era from what mm-hmm. i've seen Especially, there's the, the smog monster comes to mind isn't there one that's all about yeah that's the pollution change. yeah yeah right so this as you said is kind of leaning away from that kind of so do you that think central the studios message? are sort of going right we can make money out of this yeah. slap his name on it and it'll sell well Terminator 2 came out the same year so mm-hmm. I assume it probably jumped on the bandwagon with that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean does it get away from the earlier production I mean are we still talking about people in suits yeah still talking about so people in suits practical effects yeah practical effects what? I mean there must be by that point like, like early CGI yeah early CGI like laser beams and stuff like that yeah I really enjoyed it from what I remember, I haven't seen it for several years, but I remember enjoying it. Do you want to know a weird fact about yes. it? <laughs> okay, so, weird fact. As the people from the future travel back in time to World War II, it is implied that Steven Spielberg's dad is one of the Navy officers on a ship, and they see this space, what they assume is a space ship, uh-huh. zoom past. Oh, yes. And they say, you can tell your child when he's born, Major Spielberg. <laughs> no. <laughs> it kind of suggests that... <laughs> That was he the got inspiration for <laughs> ET. Yeah, inspiration for ET and close <laughs> encounters and stuff like that. Oh, there you go. That's kind of like, um, is it Back to the Future 2, where it's like Jaws 39 or something, <laughs> directed by <laughs> Steven Spielberg Jr. Or I think it's it's very much the heavy sci fi time travel stuff that I really kind of get involved with it with, which I really like about this one. See, I, I, I can appreciate those, that sort of tone with those films, but I think I just kind of prefer the more darker ones, but. Just, that's just personal that's just preference. you. Yeah. Right. Does that come on, on <laughs> that to me now, that does one. it? I, I think that rounds it off. It's, it's, I haven't really got that much to say other than I really like it. Sounds like I'm going to have to go and watch this one because it's not ringing any bells to me. <laughs> well, I remember, I, I remember the earlier ones and I remember the more modern ones, but there's this gap for me in between. Hmm. How many films are there again? 36. At least 36. All right. So, yeah, I've probably not seen the majority. How many Bond movies are there? 20... 26. 26. Yeah. So I think, uh, just I think. goes to show you, Godzilla, way out in front. I have to do a Bond podcast. Bondcast. <laughs> a Bondcast, right. 